you're looking at a nice Jaguar D-Type into a nice Porsche 911. And I'm sitting on a 1980s Formula One car. We're here at CNC Motorsport near Cheltenham. They've just invested in a Herco machine. So I wonder what it is that they're making on it. There's some impressive parts here today and of course an impressive machine from Herco. We're going to find out exactly the reason why Alan you bought it but first CNC Motorsport what is it that you're making here? We basically make out of production parts uh, for historic uh, motorsport and race cars um, from uh, 50s right the way through to the, the mid 90s um, and they're basically uh, either reverse engineered from original components or drawings. And what materials are you using? It's so different. Predominantly, most of our products are aluminium, but it ranges from various uh, states of steels, um, mild steels, through to you know more uh, slightly exotic with EN24s, that kind of thing. Okay, and you know, for me, I see what I mean is so different is you don't see parts like this anymore, and you're talking very small batch work, aren't you? Yeah, volumes. Yeah, volumes are very low, can be from single components. Um, if we do what you might deem for us a production run, it would be 10 components possibly. So oh, really? Some of the, some of the part, piece parts are really small volume, car sets basically. So you've got a lathe here, but you've also gone for a brand new mill from Herco, the VM20 machine. So what was the reason behind this purchase? Um, we had a previous uh, machine and it just wasn't doing it for us, it was letting us down um, and we needed something that worked and was reliable and thankfully is producing parts quicker. And what's quite interesting is you went down to the facility in High Wycombe and you were really impressed with the demonstration, weren't you? Yeah, very impressed. Uh, my son and I went down there, we met David and Andy, uh, one of the apps guys, to do the demo. And the first thing that struck us was the fact that they were machining steel faster than our old machine could machine aluminium. We just stood there and looked at each other and thought, that's kind of sold it. But this has really changed the way that you machine. That's what's quite interesting. You're looking at parts differently, different to what you've ever done before. Yeah, we've now got the capability that when we... Lots of our components require long tooling um, for, from a reach point of view. Um, so we buy tooling that's got lots of um, flute length, but we never used it before. And now we've changed the way that we machine. Um, we're, we're using the full length of the cutter. They obviously last longer because they're not loaded the same. Um, you can machine much faster because you're not putting the leverage on the, on the tool from just working on the tips of the tool. It's just a far better way of machining. You know what, it's quite interesting. I've not really heard that before. So are you telling me that you're probably saving money on tooling? Is that, is that correct? Would I be fair to say that? It, it, it means that the tools do, do last that much longer. So you're not working, you've got a, a 20 mil length of flute on a tool or maybe longer, and you're not machining with five millimeters. You're using the whole 20 millimeters. So it's loading the, the, the machine properly, it's loading the tool properly, it cuts more efficiently. So yeah, the tooling costs uh, are obviously something to, to be considered. Tooling costs, but also time savings that you're making too. It was quite an eye-opener as to how well the, the machine pre performs compared to what we were seeing before. Um, material removal rate is night and day different to what it was before. So tell me about the example that you've got on the machine at the moment. What, what time savings are you looking at on this piece? That piece part particularly is probably somewhere between 14 uh, minutes and an hour quicker to machine now the way that we're machining. But with small batch work, is that really making such a difference for you? you? You'd think not, and we used to think it wasn't that important that a machine could machine something five minutes quicker than, than another machine or a cutter could do, perform any better. But at the end of the day, when it stacks up, it does make a difference. You know, you can put, albeit small volume parts, through quicker, but you get onto the next small volume parts that much sooner. And then with Max Control, what are your thoughts on this? Super just so uh, effective, um, relatively simple to use. There's always an element of a learning curve when you start using new software, 
but it, it just it really performs. It really performs very well, and um, the machining strategies works well with, uh, like we were saying before, the the type of cuts that you take that reflects on tool in life, and that reflects on how quickly it produces a piece part. Oh, and this, I know you've got so much more. You know, when you, you went down there, you actually bought the whole machine as it is right now. So they offered you the fourth axis as well. Yeah, it was, it was a requirement that we wanted was the fourth axis capability as well. That was a package that they put together for us when we bought the machine. You happy with Herco? Yeah, very. And why? Because it works. <laughs> the teamwork. Um, you know, you, you pick up the phone and, and uh, you've got a query, um, it's answered, it's sorted out, and if an email is sent, somebody's responded to it, and if, if um, a couple of days later one of the other guys in the app's op office spots an email and doesn't not sure whether it's been responded to, they're on the phone to find out whether it's been resolved or not. So it, it, overall, the whole experience of being a customer of Herco you uh, you feel like a customer you're not just somebody who's bought a machine and that's it so it's it's very good yeah very positive and you're looking to improve the machine's efficiency in the future too yeah with with the fourth axis we're not in any way shape using the full capability of the machine with fixture and tooling we can produce multiple parts with the programming um, with changing the fixture in to using a tombstone on the fourth axis rotary so that we can load a whole car's worth of components in one hit and machine all of those all in one go rather than individual component machining. I mean you've got so much longevity with this machine and your company. I certainly hope so yeah it's, uh, it, it, it's proving that it's worth every penny that it's, it's taken to get it in, in through the workshop door and it's earning money and it's working and performing really well.